on today's agenda, we are going to freshen up the control arm. And lots of times your choices are either replace the entire control arm, or if the bushings are okay, um, just replace the bushings that are weak. And this is the one that we're going to replace, this one right here. It's called the compliance bushing. The other bushings at the other end of the control arm are, I already checked them, they're okay, they're in good shape. You are going to need several tools to complete this job. Um, and we'll just start with uh, these pry bars, inexpensive but very useful. I use this as a pointer, you know, use this one for big jobs. A couple of hammers, one's really all you need. I just like this uh, dead blow hammer for taking out the axle, which I'll show you. Punches, um, a few half inch extensions, breaker bar if you have it, half inch ratchet um, and then 19 millimeter and uh, both a open end wrench and I also like these uh, ratcheting closed end um, sockets 17 millimeter 19 millimeter and uh, three quarters is 19 is the same thing and then finally a 36 millimeter for the hub axle which you'll see um, <clears throat> this marker is really important you'll see why later uh, the swivel makes things just a heck of a lot easier um, so if you don't have an impact, this is the way to go. And then we're going to be using this gizmo, which is a homemade uh, push uh, or a bearing extractor, which is a homemade bushing extractor, which I'll show you the breakdown of that in a minute. Here's the part number for the bushing. I prefer to use the Honda because why not? It's inexpensive, about 30 bucks. And it looks like this. If you have access to an impact wrench, this will make this job much, much easier. A few other items you'll need is a liquid wrench or any penetrating oil, silicone spray, a couple of scouring pads, and a good flashlight. So we're going to try, we're going to do this job by leaving the control arm in the car. In order to do that, you got to take out this bolt here, as well as loosen up this one back here on the control arm. And the trick that I saw online was to push the axle back in to free up the control arm. That way you don't have to do the ball joint or the uh, shock mount at the bottom of the, uh, of the uh, yoke and the control arm. So you're freeing it up just enough, you'll see in a minute. So first things first. Now I have the benefit of the Ugga Chugga. So I'm gonna try, because I can't bend it out for whatever reason. So it's a 36 millimeter. Put it on here and we'll see what we get. Love this tool. Well, hopefully this doesn't give me any problems. There it goes. There it goes. Just gently knock that back. And that'll free up this part from the car itself. Now we move on to the uh, inside arm. Unless you're in the rust belt, these shouldn't be difficult to take out at all. And again, 19 millimeter down here. I'm going to use the impact well because I can. There she is. Back side of the control arm, which bolts to the frame, I'm going to take out this bolt here. And I've already lubed it with penetrating fluid back there. So let's take it out here. And 17. Slide this in first. Get as straight on it as possible. And again, you could do this with a ratchet, but since I have the torque wrench, that's what I'm going to do. Now with your pry bar, wedge this out a little bit. while you're keeping the axle in so it doesn't come out. So as you can see, you can move this. I'm just grabbing the rotor right up here. And you can move this around. That's exactly what you want. This shouldn't be too bad today. Okay, so now let's get some light on there. Let's get this control arm out. No problem. And I'm going to rest it on the perch. 
So I'm resting it on the opposite side of, of here, not on the bushing. This bushing press is homemade, obviously, and uh, this makes the job, you have to have this to do the job. So let me uh, take this apart and show you the components and where I got them. Grade eight nuts, half inch by 19 millimeter, three quarters. I just use this as a big ass spacer. It's just a huge nut, a whole bunch of washers, which I'll use as spacers. Get the high grade. And then this is probably the hardest thing to find is a, I believe it's an eight inch, maybe nine. Let's find out what this is. This is an eight inch, uh, half inch, 13 thread, grade five bolt. This makes all the difference in the world. You, you gotta go eight inch. More washers. This turns out to be the perfect thing. And I found this on the board from uh, some other uh, uh, guys that have done this job and see hopefully it focuses without the glare. It's a socket that's two and an eighth, two and an eighth inch that I got at Tractor Supply and it fits the bushing perfectly. I'll show you that in a second. Again, more spacers. These are hold downs that I got at uh, the hardware store. I got mine at Home Depot. Uh, these are cheap. They're like, you know, a, a buck and a quarter each. I just grabbed three. I think I end up using two, um, but it's good to have these around. Then a cup to catch the bushing as you push it in. You know, this pushes the bushing and then it has to go somewhere. So I found this um, idea. I think I got it on uh, idea. Others have done the job too. It's a three eighths. I'm sorry, a three inch, three inch. Yeah, you can see that um, galvanized pipe cap. And then I just drew a hole right dead center of about nine sixteenths of an inch so that it fits uh, the half inch and there's some play because it needs to be able to move around a little bit. Okay. For a little bit more about how this works, this is the bushing and we need to be able to, and this is up on the car, this flap here is up. You need to have something that you push on the metal perimeter and only the metal perimeter. So you need something that's just the right size, but slightly under and this fits that bill. So if I get kind of push it over because the rubber grommets are in the way, <clears throat> but it fits just, just under, but yet still catches the edge of the bushing. So this is your push and then this is the receiving cup. So as this pushes it in, it's got to have somewhere to go and it goes in here. And it doesn't have to be the full height, but it's got to be enough to free it. And the OEM ones come with these little arrows. And I noticed that the aftermarket ones do not. So I'm going to highlight these arrows because they're going to be really important. You'll see in the next move. Do so you see the arrow? Let's do the same here. Okay. And then I also want to mark a third point so there's no confusion of the orientation. Two, you could be 180 degrees out of phase. If you have three versus four, so just three points, if you line up those three points, you're going to be in good shape. So I'm going to put a line here, dead center, on that marking, and then perfectly in line with this one, this arrow. So probably up there a little bit more. And this arrow here. And I'm going to do one more thing. Yeah, I didn't quite put that right. So I'm going to make it wide and then go right for the center. Okay, that's better. So if I go for the center, I'll be all right. This line I actually made pretty good spotting. Okay, now when this goes in, it's going to go in this way into the control arm. So I want to continue this line down here so I have the orientation, setting up the orientation easier. So I use a little T-square. T on there, that's my spot right there, a little tricky to do, and then come down and mark down here, and just make it just above the shoulder so that when you put this in the, you'll see when you put it in the control arm you can line it up with the marks that we'll be making. 
do it to the second point. You don't have to use the square, but it might make your job a lot easier. And again, the third point. Okay. And we're going to be making similar marks on the original so that we can line this back up in the exact orientation it needs to be. Our three points, the arrow, the tip of the arrow so you can see what you're doing. Got this on Amazon. The auto parts store didn't have them, but Amazon did. Okay, that's not cooperating. There's my arrow tip, there's that. So I'm going to go here, and then it's very important, that's, the, that's just on the bushing itself. You have to mark the control arm. And get this one. Same deal, right in line with that arrow, and on the control arm too. Okay, so there's our three points, clock positions marked, putting the new one in in exactly the same orientation. So this is the setup that just works for me. Um, the, the bolt goes all the way through the bushing, through the center of the bushing, and out the other end. And I put enough uh, spacers so that the nut just grabs the bottom of the thread because you need as much throw as possible, so you want to maximize the thread length, if you, if you will, if that makes sense, so that you can push the bushing into the receiving cup. The next tricky part is to get the control arm rested on its perch and not interfering with the bushing itself, but it can hit the control arm, the edge of the control arm. You've got to get the socket exactly on the center of that bushing and tighten it down a little bit so that it stays snug. And check your work often and if you have to just tap it into place. There we go. So that it's straight in this, on the edges of that bushing and doesn't slide off. That's pretty good. That's very good. If I could get it this way just a little bit, came back the wrong way. Okay, that's pretty good. Now we tighten it down. And it just gave loose by hand. You even have to use the impact. That's amazing. Let me check to make sure the socket is going inside. Yep, just barely. And now I'll finish with the impact. I did put the impact on it and didn't take much and just shoved it right through. So uh, it could back this out. And the bushing has been removed. And there's our bushing. It's not horrible, but it's got some cracks in it, like here, here, over here. So, call, it's called preventative maintenance. And there is our important clock positions. 
Now we'll prep this to install the, the new bushing by cleaning it out. This one happens to be really clean, hardly any rust or anything on here to worry about. So I'm just making it clean and shiny. With a scouring pad. You know, beautiful. Oh, those of you in the rust belt, a little more work ahead of you to clean this up. Just clean up this edge to give ourselves an easier start. And then to make our lives even easier. Get some silicone spray in there. Make it slide a little bit easier. I'll put some silicone on the bushing as well. Just a little bit. Well, that's more than I thought it was going to be. Let's get our orientation perfect. Line up our dots. Yep. All right. So, same same procedure, but. We have less thread hanging out of the bottom, so you have less spacers. And again, you just want to get, get it started. Full threads on the nut, onto the bolt. And now this is critically important. You have to make sure that this is seated in exactly in the center of the opening. Because if you try and press this in <clears throat> without it being centered, you will deform the bushing and won't be able to complete the job. Same deal here. Get that socket square evenly on the bushing so that it presses into uh, the opener. Now let's see if we can cinch this down by hand to make sure that it's started properly. And I'm going to be watching to see if it goes goes in. Yeah, it's not taking much effort yet. Okay. It's starting to slide in. And I'm doing this by hand. Not even a breaker bar. Now that I know that it's going, I'm going to, and it's square, it's going in, I'm going to go ahead and hit it uh, slowly with the impact wrench because it is flowing. It's not binding anywhere, so it's safe to use this. Just taking my time. So you go in as far as just to leave a little bit of the lip of the bushing uh, above the control arm. You don't go flush, you go a little bit above. That's exactly how it was from the factory. And uh, I don't need to go any further. I'm done. I'm going to take this uh, homemade press out. Bushing's installed. And I look at my clock positions, and they're exactly right. It's above the uh, control arm just just a touch this is done put the control arm back